Hi everyone and welcome to Ball Python Breeder UK. In today's video we're going to talk about choosing the best hides for your ball pythons. Now I know that sounds like quite a simple subject but there's actually a little bit more that goes into it than just picking whichever one looks nicest in the pet store. So first of all we're going to take a short look at why hides are important for ball pythons. Um, then we're going to just go ahead and discuss what you're looking for a hide in terms of size, shape, etc. Um, and then we'll take a quick look at the two types of hides that I use for my collection and that have actually helped me with some difficult feeders in the past. So when choosing a uh, hide for your ball python, it needs to do a couple things for the snake. Um, but the main thing it needs to do for the snake is to give it somewhere safe, um, secure and where it can escape light. Because ball pythons are positively thigmotactic, um, meaning that they gain reassurance from being in contact with solid objects. Um, and they also gain reassurance from being out of light. Um, so examples of similar species um, in terms of being thigmotactic are chuck wallers, for example, and pancake tortoises. Uh, both of which lodge themselves into crevices between rocks um, and that is how they feel secure in their environment. So what this means is when you're looking for a hide for your ball pipe, you need to first look at the size of the hide. You need a hide that is just a little bigger than your snake and by doing that you allow the snake to press against the walls of it and to feel secure inside the hide and that is something that is going to increase the feeding response um, of your ball python and with with baby ball pythons especially if you don't provide a secure hide what you'll notice is um, especially in a, a medium to large enclosure they'll stop eating within a few weeks uh, and that is one of the main reasons why people have uh, ball pythons stop eating uh, because they're in large enclosures or they don't have good enough hides so Second, what you also need to look at is, with regards to letting light in, you need to look for a hide with a small entrance. Uh, ideally, the entrance should be about as thick as the thickest part of your snake. Or it can be a bit bigger, but not too much. And that way it stops too much light coming in, and it actually makes your snake feel safer inside the, the hide. I know that's a bit of a confusing bit of advice, given that half the people online are trying to sell you UV lighting for your snakes. Um, but really, with ball pythons, it, it's very simple. They're a positively thigmotactic nocturnal species, and too much light equals a ball python that doesn't eat. They're not naturally picky feeders, um, and they're not hard to keep. They just like to feel safe. Uh, once you get that down, you get them feeling safe, no problems. So last but not least, what you're looking for in a hide is a smooth inside surface. And this is probably the one that is the most overlooked. Um, so another thing you see on a lot of websites is this kind of old recycled textbook idea that all snakes need something rough to rub themselves on um, to shed their skin. And you still see resources telling you now you need a rough hide for your ball python so it can rub its face on it to shed its skin. Um, and, and that's just total crap. Um, <laughs> Because snakes from reasonably humid environments like ball pythons, when they're in a little microhabitat inside their burrow or their hiding place, um, they seek somewhere with high humidity anyway. And in that case, they shed easily. The skin comes off easily. And a ball python can actually shed its skin simply by rubbing its chin against um, smooth surfaces. Even the inside of a plastic tub they can shed on. Um, just like when you're playing basketball indoors, you wear rubber soled shoes uh, and you can scuff them along on the on the smooth surface of, the, of an indoor court and uh, you get perfect traction. It's just the same with smooth on smooth surfaces. So just forget about the rough, rough hide idea, which they probably hurt themselves on anyway. But really the point of having a, a smooth inside surface to the hides is twofold. So first of all, if it's smooth, it's not porous, it's not absorbing water. So any condensation, say from your snake breathing inside the hide, 
it's going to stay on the walls of the hide, it's going to increase the humidity and it's going to actually make shedding easier for your snake. Um, you could have an ambient humidity level of say 50% in your um, enclosure which is a bit low but inside a big heavy hide for an adult snake um, that humidity level could actually be as high as 70 odd percent and sometimes I'll lift up the the caves I use from some of my snakes and there will be a little bit of condensation inside the hide so that is an, a really easy way of creating a nice uh, micro habitat for your snake to to have a high humidity environment in one spot and be able to shed easily so that's the, the, the first um, kind of point to having hides with smooth insides and the second point is that smooth objects, be it hides or water bowls as well actually, um, have a much lower surface area to volume ratio. So if something is smooth, the bacteria only have that smooth surface to adhere to and grow on. And obviously one of the main problems with bacteria is that they make snakes sick. Whereas if you have a porous or rough surface, that creates a massively uneven surface with lots of dips and nooks and crannies and could multiply the um, surface area by hundreds of times if not thousands um, so think of it as you've all seen bacteria growing in petri dishes on the surface of the agar gel that they put in there um, so if you've got a smooth hide with really nice smooth insides that's like one petri dish growing germs between the times you disinfect it. If you've got one with rough insides, that's the equivalent to having your snake sitting in 50 petri dishes or 100, uh, all of germs. So that is quite a, quite a good point to think about because your snake is gonna spend a lot of its time in its hide. And the more that hide is apt, well, the more it's rough, the more it will be apt to growing germs. And the more germs are on the walls of your hide, the more likely it is that your snake will get, um, you know, issues with its skin, like necrotic dermatitis and stuff like that. So smooth hides really are um, the best for hygiene. So now we're going to take a quick look at the two types of hides that I use in my collection. Um, there are others, and I'll mention them in the article that goes with this video. But these are the two hides I swear by, and the Exoterra caves in particular have gotten a lot of tricky feeders on the right track for me. Um, I've even got ball pythons from other people, given them the Exoterra hides, um, and they've started feeding at a much higher frequency and been a lot happier. So let's check those out quickly. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show you is this NeoRep plastic hide. Now, I've got a NeoRep one, but it really doesn't matter what brand it is. These plastic hides are cheap. Um, Reasonably sturdy and basically they will keep your snake happy enough to, to keep it feeding. Um, there's lots of brands available um, and generally, I mean one this size, I wouldn't expect it to cost more than maybe £5 UK or $8 US. Um, and in fact, if you're buying a hide for your snake, um, you can get these in a variety of sizes and they'll probably be better for your snake than some of the expensive resin half logs and stuff like that you see that cost I don't know how much they cost you know stupid amounts like 20 30 bucks um, so this is not the best option but it is the second best option in my opinion <laughs> um, the only drawbacks with it are that I find the entrance a little bit large in some of these that's just a touch too large for my liking and also they're not very heavy so once your snake gets close to filling it up, they can easily lift it and move it. And snakes like ball pythons, they do generally prefer um, just the heavier and the sturdier the better, really. Now the second one over here um, that Coral is in is the Exoterra Reptile Cave. Again, this is a brand I use, but it doesn't actually matter what brand you use. Any cave like this with a nice small entrance and heavy resin design. It's gonna help hold in humidity and help the snake feel safe. Uh, Coral in particular is a picky feeder. Um, she'll only eat multi-mammate mice or African soft furred rats, whatever you want to call them. Um, so I know that if I take her cave away, um, she'll stop eating within, probably within a week actually. Um, 
so it is absolutely essential for her and these are quite heavy she can't really lift that up very easily um, and you get them in a variety of sizes and these are my go-to hide for all my ball pythons I, I've, I've even had one snake um, that had problems with chronic um, regurgitation that someone gave me um, and I, I figured out that was down to, to low level stress um, and I put it in one of these and after maybe two to three weeks it started feeding so you know it does it does tell you just how much the hide affects their their behavior and their, their health and their happiness and as I mentioned earlier if you actually lift this one up sorry coral and there you go if you look in this corner here you can see that there is actually some condensation so at the moment I'm keeping this room at um, I don't know what temperature but I've got a radiator running to help keep it warm and that lowers the ambient humidity so I'm only managing to get the humidity in their enclosures up to around 55-60% at the moment um, which won't improve until summertime really um, but under her hide it's obviously humid enough that she is getting um, an appropriate amount of condensation on the walls and humidity and she's been shedding and feeding fine so you know that is in great part thanks to the hide the only drawback with this type of hide is um, when they go to the bathroom and they get urates on them the urates tend to stick to these like glue um, so you get these patches of hard white urate on the cave um, which are always almost like stone so for hygiene sake you do need to get rid of those and what i do is i get a wire bristle brush um, which you can probably find at your local garage and I just use that to scrub it off every time. Eventually the paint will come off. It looks doesn't look as good, but it's just the best way to keep them hygienic. So now that we've taken a look at the two of those, um, I've included a couple links to them in the description. Um, not to any others, but just those two because I have found them very, very useful, just in case you want to check them out. I've also written about a few others in the, in the article that goes with this, um, some of which are great and some of which are not so great. Um, but overall, if you stick to using these two types of hides, your snakes will be thanking you for it. Uh, not vocally, obviously, but they will be. They will be thanking you with uh, larger clutches, more frequent feeding, less health problems, and just being less stressed out all around. So if you found this video useful, please do like and subscribe, and check back every week for new content.